All right, today is a review of matrices for our second semester final in honors higher algebra. And if I give you this matrix, 3, 4, 1, 0, negative 2, 5, would you be able to tell me if it's 3 by 2 or a 2 by 3? Write down what you think it is. And write it right underneath the matrix itself. Because we're going to make this into a problem. So something by something. I'll pause for a second while you give that a try. Okay. How many of you said it was a 2 by 3? How many of you said it was a 3 by 2? Oh, it's a lot more. All right. Wait, how can you describe why? Sir. It's rows first, then columns. I like to think of it as RC, like remote control or... I can't think of many things that are CR, but there's a lot of RCs. RC cola, RC stands for remote control. Anyway, so R is rows like this. Those are rows. There's three of them. And the columns are like what hold up buildings. There's two of them. All right, so now, if you're adding and subtracting, it's laughably simple. 1, 4, 0, oh, 2, 10, negative 6. If you're adding them, you just put the 3 and add it to the 1 in your answer matrix. We have a what? A 4 there. All right. But adding, subtracting, I wish it was all that simple, but it's more likely to be multiplying. How would you multiply these two matrices? Well, if it was on the calculator allowed section, you could put it in your calculator. But let's say it's not, because it's a lot harder if you have to do it by hand. So also a skill for the ACT. This multiplying matrices is something that's on there. It can be on your ACT test. This one is a 3 by 2, 3 rows, 2 columns. This one is a 3 by 2. Since, wait a minute, those don't match up. Do you get how we can't multiply these two? Remember that? If the middle inside ones don't match, they can't be multiplied. All right. So... I know it seems weird, like it seems like you should just have the same size and it should work. It does if you're multiplying. You're sorry, adding, but it doesn't if you're multiplying. What could I make this into that would be able to multiply? It's a 3 by 2, keep in mind. Yes? A 2 by 3, a 2 by 1, a 2 by 2, a 2 by anything. Exactly. Because as long as this number matches, right? Okay, so it needs to have two rows. So I'm going to make it like this, 1, 4, 2, 9. Now can I multiply it? It's a 2 by 2. Yeah. And these two match up, and your answer will be a what by what? A 3 by 2. Everybody go ahead and write that down, and then try to write for me what your answer matrix would look like, and make like put little eggs in there. Is it like that? No. Yes. You're correct. We could not add these, but this is a multiply problem. So I'm going to put a dot in there to make it clear that this is a multiply problem. All right. So it's supposed to be a 3 by 2 matrix. Does the eggs that I put in there have a 3 by 2 orientation? It does. Okay. So then what should go in this little egg? They're actually called elements of the matrix. What should go in that little element? Row one, column one. Very good. And that tells you what to use to get that answer. Here's row one. Here's column one. I had to think for a second before I got those to go together. Now, the three goes with the one, and you do what to them? Multiply them. We'll add later. The zero goes with the two, and we multiply them. And then we add what we get. So 3 times 1 is 3. 0 times 2 is 0. And then we add them. 3 plus the 0 makes 3. Do you get how I got that? I'll write it out for you. 3 times 1 plus 0 times 2. And that adds up to 3. Okay? For the practice on this, everybody try to fill out all the other six total spots for our 3 by 2 matrix answer. Pause for a second while you try that. So, oh, I got a worksheet in the way here. Uh, 
you were trying to multiply this thing out, and I'd like to find out what you thought some of these numbers were. So, uh, for the first row, okay. I had open first column. First column, all right. 3, 0, and 11. 0 and 11. Can anybody verify those numbers? Okay, awesome. Keep going. Oh. You're on a roll. Oh, Are you I'm done yet? Oh, that's all right, that's all right. Okay, who's got the other row? Or the other column, I mean, yes. 49? All right, anybody verify those numbers? Quite a few people do. All right, good. All right, so uh, that's multiplying matrices. Does it get harder? Yeah. There's easier matrices problems, but there's harder ones than that, too. Here's the harder kind. 2A plus this matrix, 1042, is equal to this matrix. 10, 12, 15, 13. All right, now, you guys had a question just like this in your matrix test, and a lot of people got it wrong, because they thought we had to use inverses. Inverses is a thing, but we don't need inverses for this. We just need to get rid of this, and get rid of this, and then A will be alone. So, how do I get rid of the matrix? Subtract it. Everybody start by just subtracting that matrix, and then somehow use some level of genius to get rid of that so that the other, do it to both sides, so that your answer will be a matrix. Your answer will be a two by two matrix. See if you can do it. I'll pause for a second while you do. Okay. Miss Smith, could, if that is your real name, could you tell me how I start? Which would be? One four zero two. And what did you get when you did that? Nine, eight, fifteen, and eleven. I agree. Then take it from there. Uh, A H in the back row. Did you get rid of that too? All right. Exactly. Notice she didn't say divide by two. You can't divide matrices by anything, but you can multiply them by a half. Now, it'll get you the same answer as if you had divided by 2, but you need to know that multiplies, matrices can't be divided. Okay, so A is half of 9, 4.5, half of 8, 4, half of 15, 7.5, half of 11, 6.5. Kind of painful that there was that many decimals, but there you go. Oh, sorry. 5.5, I lose half a point for one of my elements being wrong, as would you. Okay, yes, sir. If I had divided everything by 4, then I'd go 1 fourth here, 1 fourth here. This would have been a 4, right? Then I'd take 1 fourth of 9, it would be 9 fourths is what I would have written. It's the same thing as, as, as yep, eight, divi eight divided by four like that is eight divided by four, which is two. And then it would be 15 fourths, and this would have been 11 fourths. So you, you get that dividing by something is the same as multiplying by one over that thing, right? So I'm saying I get that you might just want to divide this in your head, but... When you are asked a question about it, you can't say, oh, I should my, divide my matrix by blank. You can't divide matrices, but you can multiply by their inverse. That comes up when you see this problem. Here's a matrix, 1, 4, 2, 7. Here's a matrix, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And it equals this matrix, 12, 5, 6, and 9. You can find out the numbers that are in the question mark spots. How? you got to do inverses. So to be able to do inverses, you also have to be able to do, do, do determinants. And I need to remind you how this works. So here's how this works. Go back to a simple matrix, 1, 2, 5, uh, 8. Do you remember that there is a way to find its inverse? It's kind of like the number 8 has an inverse, it's 1 over 8. It'd be awesome if the inverses were that easy, just put 1 over each number. It's not. Here's how you do it, I'll remind you quick, and then I'm going to have you do one. To get an inverse of this, it's 1 over the determinant 
and I'll show you that in a second, times the matrix, except the matrix has to be rearranged. Do you remember me saying the first shall be last and the last shall be first? The one and the eight swap places. And then, does anybody remember what happens to these two guys? They're negative of themselves. Negative two and negative five. Okay, now what the heck is that determinant thing? That determinant thing, and this is a good reminder for you, do you get why we don't want the determinant to be zero? Because if we were dividing one over zero, that'd be a problem. So here's how you find the determinant of this. It's one times eight minus five times two. One times eight minus five times two. You take these two positions, you multiply them. Oh, got a little sloppy there. Those two positions and multiply, and then you take these two positions and multiply, and then you subtract them. So in this case, it's 1 over 8 minus 10, which makes negative 2. That's okay. The only number you can't have there? 0. So do you remember at the beginning when you first learned these things, we went around looking at matrices trying to find the poison matrix. And these are matrices that would give you a zero here. So when you cross multiplied, you were looking for what would make it equal zero. All right, so back to we were doing one over the determinant, and then these numbers came from these getting switched, and then these becoming the opposite of what they were. So 8, negative 2, negative 5, 1. Now I just take half of everything and make it negative. Negative a half times 8 will be negative 4. Negative a half times negative two will be positive one. Negative a half times negative five would make positive half of five, 2.5. And negative a half times one makes negative a half, or negative 0.5. There would be my final answer. Now, I kind of did that one for you to get that determinant. I'm going to have you try getting a determinant. Remember. It's 1 over the determinant, and then these numbers get switched, and these numbers go opposite of each other. See if you can pull it off. Here we go. 0, 2, 4, 6. I want to know what is its inverse without a calc. In a moment, I'll have you check it with the calculator. 1 over the determinant. And then you got to know what to do with the little elements there. Swapping things around. Opposites. All right, I'll pause for a second. I'll give that a try. Okay, you do 0 times 6. And then subtract 2 times 4. Perfect. So that's going to be 0 minus 8, which makes 1 over negative 8. Raise your hand if you had that right. Okay, good. And then this part... You had to do some flipping and flopping. Mr. P, which which one's got flip-flopped in here? Excellent. And then the other two? Negative 2 and negative 4. Very good. And now I just have to multiply 1 eighth by all those things. So this gets a little nasty, but it's negative 6 eighths. It's negative 2 over negative 8, which makes positive 2 eighths, which reduces to 1 fourth. And then it's negative 4 over negative 8, which reduces to 1 half. And then it's anything times 0 is just 0. Now, how could we have done that with a calculator and way easier? Remember, there's two parts of your big final. One says calcs allowed, one says no calcs. So grab a graphing calculator. I'll show you how to do this on a calc. I would call this matrix A. I'll pause for a second while we can put that in. The calculator. The, the matrix button is the fourth one down on the left hand side, if your calculator is like mine, anyways. The matrix, called matrix A, 0, 2, 4, 6. Okay, so here's how I'd do it. Right above the x to the negative 1 button is matrix. And if I want to edit matrix A, don't forget to arrow over. Otherwise, all I'll do is plop an A on your screen. That doesn't help very much. I want to edit A and make it, it's a 2 by 2, I already got those in there, so I'm good. And then I make it 2, 4, 6, I think I did 2, 4, 6, 8, didn't I? 
Ah. Zero, two, four, six. Okay, there we go. Okay, yay, I got a matrix in there. So how do I make it the inverse of that? Well, first of all, you quit, which is a really weird feeling, but it'll save it for you automatically. Clearing this out. And then I put in, go back to that matrix menu, and this time I don't edit it. I just slap the A on the screen. But, what do you do? Exactly, the same key the matrix above. Because you use inverse so many times, they just put them together there. You often do inverses. So, oopsie, I got to hit enter to get, uh, ah, ah, delete that out of there. Okay, now I got to get that negative one. Uh, that, there we go, you're right, I don't need a, a second to get to that key. There we go, A to the negative one. And then I hit enter. And there it is, it's the same thing I had, except they automatically reduced my decimals and stuff. But what if I wanted fractions? And we might do this to you on the test. Math. Frac. And then it hasn't changed yet, so what do I do? Enter. There we go. Negative three-fourths, which is actually better than my answer. Two-eighths was my answer, and they've got one-fourth. Again, it's better. They reduced it. There we go. It's all done and reduced. That is the inverse. Why do you care? Because you need inverses to solve problems like this. Let's just use that same matrix. 0, 2, 4, 6. There. Is that correct? Okay. And I times it by the mystery matrix. I'm going to call it M for matrix. Is equal to 0, 4, 9, negative 12. Is there some matrix I could multiply it by that will make that happen? Yes, there is. So, this we call matrix A. This we call matrix B. But we're solving for M. How do we get M alone? Multiply both sides by what? Inverse of A. So, you'll go inverse A here and inverse A here. Notice I did it on the left. If you do it on the right, you will get the wrong answer. Right is wrong in this case. You want to be on the left side of it. Okay? Remember that matrices can't be multiplied back and forth. Like A times B is not the same as B times A. They're different. So you always do inverse of A and then B. Do you get you don't need this side because they're just going to cancel each other? You just need this side. Which is saying to take the inverse of A and times it by B. Well, you got to put the B matrix in your calculator. I need a second to do that, so I'm going to pause. Here I'm in my calculator editing my B matrix, and it is a 2 by 2, and I go 0, 4, 9, negative 12. Cool. I got B in there. Now I quit out. Clear this screen. Oh, it's already cleared. Good. Now I want the inverse of A times B. Here's matrix A. How do I make it inverse? With that button. Inverse A, and all at once, I don't have to hit enter. I can just say right away times B, and i got to get the B matrix off the matrix menu. Not editing it. I don't want to change it. I just want to plop a B out there. There it is. Hit enter. And there's my answer. Could I ask you for a fraction on that? Sure, and it would be easy to do. Go ahead, do it, just to make sure you know how. And then compare with the kid sitting next to you. See if your answer looks like that. And if it doesn't, they might not know how to do it, and you should help them. I'll pause for a second. Okay, so I'm just curious what you guys are up to nowadays. Um, so when you did inverse of A times B, uh, and then you changed it to a fraction, the last little step is all I need to do here. So I go to math, enter, enter, and it's 9 fourths, negative 6, 0, and 2. Okay. Now the last kind of matrix problem that I have to get you ready for is where they give you two equations and you don't even have a matrix, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to make it be a matrix. Do you remember how to set up the matrix for this? There's a matrix, another skinny matrix, 
And another skinny matrix. This one obviously goes with this one somehow. And let's see if you can figure out how to set up the matrix equation for this and then actually solve it. That is a typical question off your final. I'm not saying there's, that's the, obviously not the exact question, but that's the more advanced matrix problems. And when it's all done, they might have told you that this was all about X being how many rabbits they're going to sell and Y being how many chipmunks they're going to sell at their establishment. I wonder if chipmunks would make good pets. It'd be fun to have, like, on your shoulder. People like ferrets. Why not chipmunks? It's probably not legal. Somebody said something once about chipmunks and mice that made me think about them differently. Our chipmunks and squirrels made me think about them differently. So they're basically all in the same family as rats. So they're basically just a rat with a really good haircut. Ah, I gotcha, I gotcha. It's about, it's about that same thing where the, the book is about the rat wanting to become, a, was it a squirrel in that case? A squirrel? Mm -hmm. One of the things that's interesting about uh, uh, this is that insurance-wise, uh, certain animals are not covered on your insurance policy. And basically, mice is something that you can't get stuff covered by your insurance for. Uh, and things that are related to mice. So, like, for instance, uh, if you have a uh, raccoon running around in your house doing damage, it's covered. If you have a uh, mouse or a squirrel running around in your house doing damage, not covered. So it kind of is interesting. If uh, you have damage from an animal, it's probably wise that you not, like, uh, as you're reporting your insurance claim, assume that, oh, well, it's going to be covered. It, dep it really depends. The insurance guy is going to come out, and they're going to determine what kind of bite marks are there on here. Because if there's certain kind of bite marks, you can tell it was the type of animal that's not covered or covered. And it can be a big difference. Like one causes you to get a check for like ten grand for your insurance, and the other could be worth zero because not covered. So anyway... I'll let a raccoon loose in your attic to cover the tracks. <laughs> that's, that's, you're pretty genius, except you're probably going to get arrested for insurance fraud, which is a thing. We, there were some customers a while back who were uh, desperate for money, and so they took a ball-peen hammer, which is a hammer that's got a ball on the end of it, and they went out to their car and went bong, 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 and then said it was hail. Exactly. Because they thought, how can they prove it's not hail? But you can prove that's not hail because they they look at the impacts and uh, the people had hit the side of their car. Does hail fall this way? No. So anyway, not covered. They also look for scratches in there because a, 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 a hail won't scratch as it dents. And a ball peen hammer, if it's got any little flaw on that surface, which it's going to when you're banging on things, it's going to cause a scratch in the dent. And you can tell, oh, that wasn't hail, because ice doesn't scratch, but it can dent. So anyway, so, and those people, if they get caught doing that, uh, they can go to jail for that. It's not just like, oh, they, they don't pay you your claim. They can go to jail. So, because it happens a lot. There's people where... They're short on money or whatever, and all of a sudden they'll decide, you know what, I'd rather just collect money on my house. I can't sell it, and so I'm going to just burn it down. And they'll fake a fire, burn their own house down so that they can get the insurance claim. Instead of having to sell it, they just take the money the insurance company gives them. And so that's, again, highly illegal. They can go to jail for that. Uh, but it happens, and the investigators always come out and look, and uh, sometimes... Uh, if you've um, if you've used an accelerant, a lot of times they can figure that out. In other words, if you sprinkle gas all over your house, they can tell 
that you did that after the fire is done. It's amazing that they can figure that stuff out. Yes. Get the insurance. Interesting. She's saying that apparently in Excelsior there was there was evidence that that happened uh, uh, during the Depression. People burned down buildings there. Okay. So anyway. Back to this one. I hope you said it was 2 and 1 and 3 and negative 1. Just look for a moment. Do you see where I got those numbers? All right. Then this is the X and the Y matrix. And then the last one just kind of lines up with this one. I hope you kind of saw that and knew it was 7 and 0. Cool. Then I have to get this matrix off of here. So I'm going to do its inverse. And I'm going to call it matrix A. And then I'm going to do its inverse to get it off of there. And we're going to call that matrix B. And then we're going to multiply inverse of A on both sides, technically. But on the left side, you really don't need to do it because it's just going to make this cancel. And I need to do the inverse of A times B, and you'll have it. Has anybody already done all of that and have the answer? LF, what'd you say? 1.4 and what? 4.2, can anybody verify those numbers? All right, a whole bunch of people can. So that was, again, typing this in as matrix A underneath the X here. That's matrix A. And then doing inverse of A times by that guy, which is B. Okay, cool. That's about as hard as matrices get. Uh, the only other thing that could be a little titch harder is if they make you write those equations. And they'd say something like for that top one, he gets $2 for every xylophone that he sells and $1 for every yak that he sells. Very diverse store, apparently. Uh, and very cheap yaks. Um, and he got $7 total for that sale. This is just an example of how you could set this up. Maybe these are waffles that he's uh, making profit on waffles. He loses the money on every, uh, I don't know, toaster that he sells. Uh, and then he made nothing when it was all over with. Anyway, you could write, you could give you the info, you could have to write the equation, but again, there might be only one question out of 74 on that, so let's not stress about it too much. You could probably put the equations together if you had to. All right, so there's matrices. So tonight's homework is to do the evens off the matrices worksheet. Now, that's not much. Now, I'm going to give you what I'm going to assign you next. Today, this is not assigned, but I'm handing out this packet. It's blue. And it's called the Semester 2 Practice Test. This is long, and some of you are going to say, well, how come there's so many problems? Because it's the same size as the final. It's just like the final, which you could do in less than two hours. We give you about two hours for your final. Everybody finishes about a half, well, I shouldn't say that. Many people finish a half hour early, so it's about an hour and a half worth of work if you just sat down and did them all at once. So I'm not assigning it all or anything. I'm not even assigning any of it tonight. But... If you're the type who wants to get on this and get it handed in, uh, you know, or get on it early because all of this will be assigned, you have a pretty easy assignment tonight of that matrix worksheet, and I'll add this blue one to it. So matrix worksheet, all you're doing is the evens, and if you're going to start on this blue one now, you can. And that's, I'm going to pause for a second, and that's all I got for the video for today.